today's episode, we're talking all about attention and why I believe attention is the most important asset for you to be building right now. I'm Angus Pike and welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. Now for this episode here, we're going to be getting a little bit old school. So for those of you that are just listening to this, you won't realize I'm standing at the old flip chart here. Now we're going to be working our way through a resource here called the Six Practice Multipliers. And underneath this episode, I'll have a link there for you so you can download it. Now attention is by far the asset that we want to be building right now. So for many of us, we are having huge drop-offs in the numbers side of our practice. And for some of you, you're completely closed down, so you're not seeing anybody. And what we need to be working on at this time is we need to have strategies so we're remaining front of mind. So when the time comes that we work our way through coronavirus and business starts to come back online, we remain forefront of the mind of the people that we're seeing. Now, in my two practices and through Adio Media, I'm really ramping up the helpful content that I'm sharing with my audience. But there's a strategy to that, okay? Strategy is important. Tactic is a, a video or a Facebook post, but strategy is attention. That's the thing that we're actually going afterwards. So how do we go about building attention? Now, the very first thing that we need to be thinking about is this, is that first of all, before we even think about building attention is <clears throat> We need to actually be great at what we do. The very last thing we want to do when it comes to marketing is market a product that's not great because in today's digital world of social media, a bad message multiplies really quickly. If you're not able to help your patients get a health result, then you need to be using this time right now to be getting really good at what you're doing. Now, I know for many of you, this is not the sexy message that you want to be hearing. It's, Angus, I want to learn about videos and I want to learn about social media. And can you tell me a little bit about some Facebook ads? Those tactics are only important once you know that you can really help people get a health result. Now, we can be sometimes our toughest judges when it comes to thinking, are we actually good enough? The question I often ask practitioners is, would you be happy going to see you? And if your answer isn't an immediate yes, then I want you to spend this time right now actually getting better, reading books, mentoring with other practitioners, taking courses. There's loads of online courses that you can be taking at the moment to be upskilling. Once you start to feel confident in your skills, when you can honestly look at yourself and feel like you can help people get a health result, only then can we start to work our way through these next five points. Now, point number two is one that we hear in marketing all the time, and it is the one that I see health practitioners have the biggest challenge with. And that is, first of all, what we need to do is choose an audience to serve. In essence, this is sometimes referred to as choosing a target market, as choosing a niche. Now, the challenge that you might be having may well be the one that I had in the early days, in that if I focus surely on a smaller or a single group of people, then my message is getting to less people. And as a chiropractor, I serve anybody with a spine can benefit. If I'm a dentist, then maybe I'm saying, hey, listen, if you've got a set of teeth, I can help you. And maybe you're a naturopath who knows that the work that you do serves a whole different group of people. Now, the challenge is this, and maybe you've heard me say this beforehand, is that when you try and communicate with everybody, you end up communicating with nobody. Now, I was reading a book. Seth Godin is one of my uh, favorite authors, particularly with regards to uh, marketing. And he had a great metaphor that I want to explain with you now. He said, niche marketing or choosing an audience is the message that we have is like a dropper full of ink. And for those of you that are listening here, I've got a big glass of water in my hand. And if I take that dropper full of red ink, and if I'm to drop it inside of here, it's quite possible that just with one drop of red ink, I could turn this entire glass red. But if I took that same drop of ink and I walked down to the beach <clears throat> outside of my practice down over in Port Melbourne, then I took that same dropper of red ink and I dropped one drop inside of there, that would have no impact whatsoever in changing the water. We become lost. So unless you have the budget of McDonald's or Nike or Coca-Cola, you can't afford to be trying to send a message out to everybody. We need to make the most of our budgets, of our time and our effort. And the way we do this is by first choosing an audience to serve. 
Now one of the side effects, the good side effects of doing this too, is that when we focus on a particular audience, it makes it much more easy for us to be perceived as an authority or as an expert. The very nature of those words means that we narrow things down and we think about the healthcare system. We go from the general practitioner all the way up to the expert, the orthopedic surgeon, the neurologist. They know and focus less of their, uh, their attention on a smaller group of people. So to begin with, we want to choose an audience. Now, when it comes to choosing an audience, to begin with, there's a couple of things I want you to know. This is not a marriage. This group that you choose to focus on here can and probably will change over time. When I started off in practice, I had a very strong focus on athletes and I wanted to work with elite athletes. I worked my way up into working with our Olympic swim team and I quickly realized this was not a group that I wanted to work with. Many of them lovely people, but lots of them were real prima donnas. It was almost like an honor for me to be able to work with them. They would call me out at all times of the day and or night. Often I wouldn't get paid for the work I was doing because again, it was my pleasure to be able to care for these athletes. And I soon realized that I took much more pleasure in looking after your average everyday mums and dads. So when you're thinking about choosing an audience, I want you to think about two things. Ask yourself two questions. First of all, who do I really love working with? And second of all, who do I get great results with? And somewhere in the match between those two groups of people there is the audience that you want to begin to focus on. Now into step three, once we've chosen an audience, the thing that we want to do is we want to start to build trust by delivering value in advance. Now you might have noticed, I certainly have, on the internet, everyone's an expert. Certainly everybody is a health expert. I'm seeing people giving me health advice who have a six week personal trainer uh, course or nutrition uh, experts on there that have no formal training whatsoever. So whilst we can reach and communicate with more people online, the thing that is plummeting very, very quickly online is trust. We are really suspicious about the messages that come to us. And if we want to start to break through and build trust, then the thing that we must do is we need to deliver value in advance. Here's what this looks like. The content that you're sharing online should be getting the person that we chose in step number two there, should be getting that person one step closer to the health outcome that they're looking for. So let's just say that in step number two, um, our practice in Port Melbourne, one of our avatars, one of the audience that we really love to serve there is a terrific client called Alana. Uh, Alana is a uh, Pilates instructor. She has very similar health values to what we want in terms of eating and lifestyle and all of those kind of things there too. So we start to think about Alana in this situation here and what kind of videos and content does Alana want? Now we could take it a step further and we could think of Alana who had headaches or Alana who had fertility problems or Alana who had low back pain, any of those kind of things there. And we create videos. So maybe we could give her some stretches that she wants, she could do. I could take her through an anti-inflammatory diet that would help her body to heal naturally, stress management techniques. The kind of content that you're sharing is not important, but what is important is that the content that you share helps to get that person one step closer to the health outcome that they're looking for. And that's what will build massive amounts of trust, deliver value to this person. Now, step number four is that we need to be playing the long game. I was chatting with a coaching client this morning and we're talking about the way that most people run their social media is a bit like fishing and they head down to the local pier and they throw their rod over with their bait into the water there and if they haven't caught a fish in the first five minutes, they wind their uh, reel up and they head back home again and they say, this fishing thing is rubbish, it doesn't work. Building relationships because trust is so low takes time. In fact, about 20 years ago, they said it took about five touch points for somebody to feel comfortable making a buying decision. Now, whether that was buying a washing machine or making an appointment to come and see you or me. Nowadays, just 20 years after that, it's closer to 30. In fact, there's some other research that shows that the vast majority of people who are going to make a buying decision haven't made it within six months. So if we're not consistently putting content out there to our audience, if we're not showing up week after week after week, 
for at least the next 12 months. We can't build the relationships. So it does mean that our marketing needs to be sustainable. I'm suggesting that you should be sharing a piece of content and showing up inside the email inboxes and on the social media platforms just once a week. We're used to this once a week. And if you can't find the time to produce one you know, three minute video each and every week, then you're gonna risk becoming irrelevant and being ignored by your community. So we must be prepared to play the long game. Now, I touched on this beforehand. Practice multiply number five is don't ignore email. Now, email is one of those things that people often refer to as a little bit old school. And I hear stories all the time that email is outdated, less people are opening their emails anymore, and we're overrun with email. And I would answer yes to every one of those. Yes, we do have more emails coming into our email inbox. And yes, uh, email open rates are lower. But the response from email is still multiple times better than it is from social media. Social media is a very fast flowing river. We create a great piece of content like I talked about before that builds value in advance. We drop it into that fast river and it races through. And unless your audience happens to be on the social media platforms at that time, it gets missed. OK, at very best, 6% of your audience gets to see your message which means if you've got a thousand followers on Facebook or Instagram, you share a great piece of content, that means that 60 at best are going to see them. Now, email open rates, if you're doing a good job, then you can expect that to be 30%. So that's, by my maths, five times more, 500% more effective. And in fact, the research continues to show that when it comes to building trust, having people make a buying decision, all of those kind of things, email is superior to all other types of technology. Now, the final thing that I want you thinking about here is that you must have a growth mindset. Now, the one thing that I know that when it comes to a digital marketing approach is this, is that as much art as it is science, what works for me this week might need subtle changings next week. What works for me here in Melbourne, Australia, might be a little bit different in New Zealand or Spain or America. And if we don't have a growth mindset, if we're not prepared to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes, then your results from your digital marketing are really going to suffer. We need to take a long look at this that begins at first with us having a product that's actually worth marketing, that then starts to develop into us choosing a single target audience. Who is it that we're gonna serve? We're gonna build bucket loads of trust with this person by giving them value in advance. Remember, we're playing the long game. This is a 12 month process, at least that you're working into. Don't ignore email and also don't expect it all go right from step number one. Now, in the coming episodes, I'm going to dive deeper into each and every one of these. What are the ingredients of a great email campaign? How do we get an email address? How do we create content that actually builds trust? and lots of other topics also. Now, if you want to download that six practice multipliers, this right here, I'll have a link somewhere in the episode show notes that'll give you a bit of a guide to go through here. Gang, as always, thanks for all that you do. Keep saving lives. See you back here real soon. Bye. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out the Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to apply, implement, systematize, and help guide you and your practice to the next level. Now you can join me on over at adiomedia.com forward slash join. That's adiomedia.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there.